condition. It's a mental health condition. And just like if you're having heart problems or kidney problems or brain problems, schizophrenia is just that. It's a health problem. And if it's not treated, it becomes decompensated and it can lead to death. And that's what Dr. Mitchell continues to highlight in the autopsy report. Obviously, he talks to some of the things that underscore the neglect. And it's heartbreaking for this family. And it's disgusting for all the rest of us. Another marker of neglect is the severe infestation of lice and bed bugs. Lice are obligate blood sucking etoparasites. When the numbers are severe, circumstances indicate neglect. The full life cycle of a lice is 24 to 28 days and because they cannot live without blood, we know that he was not being properly treated. Based on the timeline provided, LaShawn Thompson suffered from severe body insect infestation. That's bed bugs biting him, as he notes, in his eyes, in his nose, in his mouth, in his ears, all over his chest all over his privates, they said it was innumerable how many bed bugs bites he had over his body. And he pointed that out and he talked about it clearly spanned greater than 28 days. The number of times the bugs were roaming his body, finding blood anywhere they could get it. What a torture chamber he was living in, Brad. The Fulton County Jail was a torture chamber for your brother. He noted Mr. Thompson was neglected to death. That stood out to me. Mr. Thompson was neglected to death. Another important thing legally, at autopsy, postmortem toxicology revealed negative results for the requisite treatment medications in his bloodstream. The lack of medication in his bloodstream at autopsy is objective evidence that the severe mental illness suffered by Mr. Thompson's Shanita was not being medically treated at the time of his death. Untreated schizophrenia can lead to psychotic decompensation. He's trying to explain it mentally, uh, medically to us what was the cause of death. And just in a minute, I, I know Attorney Hopper is gonna go deeper in that. The interactions of Mr. Thompson's caregivers are directly related to his death. Therefore, the cause of death should be listed as complications due to severe neglect with the contributing cause stated as untreated, decompensated schizophrenia. Really what Dr. Mitchell is articulating in the autopsy is what we in the legal profession were defined as criminal negligence. Somebody has to be held accountable for this. Somebody needs to account to this family. We're looking to Fulton County leadership, the Fulton County commissioners, 
each one of you has blood on your hands until you do right by LaShawn Thompson's family. What is highlighted in this autopsy tells us that the Sheriff's Department has a cancer growing at the jail cell. And the continual neglect by the Fulton County Commissioners will only cause that cancer to grow. How many more LaShawn Thompsons have to succumb and suffer the inhumane treatment before you step up and provide effective leadership? Not tomorrow, not next week, but now. How long, Fulton County? How long, Fulton County? How long, Fulton County? How long, Fulton County? How long? How long, Fulton County? 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 And finally, before I turn it, and I think it's highlighted there what yeah, you want. Okay. Attorney Harper and I have long discussed that people are pointing fingers at each other. But as my mother taught me when I was a little boy, when you point a finger at somebody, you got four pointing back at you. So the sheriff who was honest enough to come out and stand with the family and say, that he knew they had real issues in this case. If he's pointing fingers at the county commissioner, he has to also use self-criticism also. But, but I don't want the county commissioner to try to just throw this at the doorstep of the sheriff, who I understand has talked about those problems with the county commission. And so if they pointing fingers at the sheriff, then you got four fingers pointing right back at them. The medical contractor, if they try to point fingers at the sheriff, well, they got fingers pointing right back at them because the autopsy talked about, and you can see it there, for 93 days, it was severe neglect from a mentally ill citizen for 93 days. And about 40 of them, Attorney Elwitz, he didn't get any medication at all. The medical charts are void for any medicine going to him. So a man who needed medication daily to deal with the schizophrenia. So people will say, well, how could he lay there and just let the bed bugs bite him? Well, unless you have schizophrenia, unless you have severe medical illness, and you're not getting your treatment, and your body is decompensating, then don't you try to judge what a mentally health patient is going through in his mind. Amen. Amen. Your mental health status should not equal the death penalty. And that's what happened in Fulton County. Yes. Now, you're going to hear from a great lawyer, a man who's been fighting here in Fulton County against the jail for years now. And so he knows where all the skeletons are buried. And Attorney Harper is going to talk to you about a lot of things. But most importantly, he's going to talk to you about the mechanism of death. My good friend, great lawyer, Attorney Michael Harper. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Crump. Those of you who started with us in this journey in the very beginning, when we first released those photos, the first question that you all asked was, how did he die? The sheriff put out a statement, as you all may recall, that the death at that time was undetermined. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The dependent autopsy from the Fulton County Medical Examiner 
put undetermined, as you all recall, as the cause of death. We now have the independent autopsy results. So we now know what caused LaShawn Thompson to die. And it was criminal negligence. As you recall the facts of this case, he was arrested in June of last year. He was thrown in that cell in the mental health ward and left there to die. He had no medications, as you've heard. He was dehydrated. He had no food. He was not bathed. And I have to remind you, you can show this, I believe, the picture of the cell. This is the filthy conditions that LaShawn Thompson was housed in for three months at this jail. No one ever came in to help him. And as Attorney Crump said, decompensated schizophrenia means you cannot help yourself. Mm -hmm. He was unable to clean his own cell. He was unable to care for himself. It was their responsibility to care for him, and they did not. So what happened was, slowly over time, he was dehydrated, he was malnourished, he lost, we now know, about 30 pounds. And he was lying there in that cell, and the rhythm of his heart began to beat out of whack, out of control. It was an arrhythmia. So the autopsy report calls it a cardiac arrhythmia. If you want to read the whole So what thing. it says here, this is for Dr. Mitchell. For these reasons, it is the opinion of this forensic pathologist that Mr. Deshaun Thompson died due to severe neglect, the combination of dehydration, rapid weight loss, and malnutrition complicated by untreated, decompensated schizophrenia, which means, again, he could not care for himself. All of those factors led to a fatal cardiac arrhythmia. LaShawn Thompson's death is no longer undetermined. Mm, tell it. We now know how he died. It was a fatal cardiac arrhythmia due to all the aforementioned factors here of the decompensated schizophrenia, malnutrition, dehydration. This is inexcusable. This should have never happened in any jail in America. We are in Atlanta in the home of civil rights. Fulton County is the seat of Atlanta. For this to happen to one of our citizens, to one of our own, cannot stand by. We must all speak out and let the Fulton County Commissioners know that we will not stand for this. It is one thing, as Attorney Crump said, to try to make changes at the jail, but you must make this family whole. Yeah. Sean Thompson's family has to live with these horrible autopsy results for the rest of their lives. When the cameras are off, when we all go home, when we all move on with our lives, they will never be able to move on with their life. They have these images. They have this report to remember for the rest of their days. We must make this family whole. This cannot happen in Fulton County. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Attorney Harper. And the next person who's going to uh, present to you is no stranger in Atlanta. He fights all over the state of Georgia uh, as his position president of the NAACP. But also, I tell you, President Griggs, if this isn't an election issue, I don't know what is. Wow. Mm -hmm. Attorney Gerald Griggs, a great civil rights lawyer and our leader. Thank you, yeah. thank you. And I have, to, I have to be clear here. What I just heard in that independent autopsy report is appalling. It is revolting. It is not representative of the birthplace of civil rights. And so as Attorney Crump and Attorney Harper and his family have already said, it's time for the Fulton County Commission to do more than just talk. Exactly. Yeah. It's time for swift changes to occur at the Fulton County Detention Center. It's time for the sheriff to accept responsibility about what happened on his watch. Amen. Mm -hmm. A man was subjected to death based on criminal negligence. Yeah. which the last time I read the criminal code mm -hmm. is chargeable in this state. Mm -hmm. 
So it's time for the Fulton County District Attorney to do more. Amen. Amen. As the oldest civil rights organization in this country, mm -hmm. we are sick and tired of having to stand out in front of capitals mm. to demand justice. Tell them. So it's also time for the mental health czar in this state to do more. Tell them, Mr. The Fulton County Detention Center should not be the largest care facility for mental health in Amen. the state of Georgia. Amen. Amen. We are closing level one trauma centers, but not addressing the issue of health care. And there's no more important health care issue than mental health. Amen. So as the president of the Georgia NAACP, we have a couple demands. Okay. One, you need to make this family whole. That's right. Amen. Period. Yeah. Point blank. Yeah. Two, somebody needs to be charged for this. Amen. This is atrocious. Arbitrary resignations are not enough. It's time for criminal charges. Yeah. Mm. And number three, uh -huh. there needs to be policy and legislation to prevent this from ever happening again. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let's be clear. Black lives matter in Georgia. Okay. And if you're an elected official and you can't say you have black legislation to address this, you need to reassess your electability. Mm. We turned out the vote in 2020. We turned out the vote in 2021. We turned out the vote in 2022. There's an election year this year. We're not talking about 2024. Okay. We're talking about 2023. Okay. So if you don't address this issue with LaShawn Thompson, you can be warned that all of the units of the NAACP uh -huh. will be knocking on your door to replace you. Wow. So again, My man. I stood before this family and told you we were going to fight for you. We're going to continue to fight for you. And to the elected officials, mm -hmm. no more thoughts and prayers, no more we're voicing concerns without policy. It's time for policy to address the mental health crisis in this state immediately. So one last person that has to be called to task on this, and I believe that's the reason why we're standing outside of the Georgia State Capitol. Uh -huh. We're always talking about mental health, and we need more mental health funding. So we're calling on the governor right. yep. to do a couple things. Okay. One, he needs to meet with this family. Amen. To address what happened in his state. Yeah. Two, he needs to fully fund our mental health facilities in this state. Yeah. So that we don't have another LaShawn Thompson languishing in a pretrial detention facility being eaten by bed bugs. He was innocent. Yeah. He was merely being detained. Mm -hmm. That should not have led to his death. Yeah. Yeah. Tell it, Mr. So when we talk about law and order, we always got to talk about justice. Yeah. And justice requires that people that are innocent should be treated with the care and the compassion of every citizen. And finally, uh -huh. it's time for Georgia to live up to its civil rights mantle. Okay. Starting with LaShawn Thompson. So if you quote Dr. King, on, you quote John Lewis, you quote C.T. Vivian, but you're not doing the work uh -huh. for this family, uh -huh. stop quoting them. Wow. Oh, wow. I'm Attorney Gerald Griggs, the president of the Georgia NAACP. It's time for civil rights to mean something in Georgia. Thank you. All right, All right. Mr. President. Awesome. Say his name. Sean Thompson. 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 We want to say his name loud enough where Governor Kemp can hear us. Say his name. Sean Thompson. Because you're right, Mr. President. Governor Kemp should meet with this family because I believe that this is the most deplorable death in custody case in the history of America. Absolutely. And it happened in your state. So thank you again, Mr. President, for our marching orders. Uh, now we're going to hear from our spiritual leader who's going to give us different kind of marching orders, not only to speak truth to power, but also to speak to this family in this uh, just heart-wrenching time where they have to learn about the details of how LaShawn was taken from this earth. 
and this just isn't any regular uh, spiritual leader. This is a national spiritual leader. I mean, thought leader. Uh, one of the most skilled, gifted, intelligent, articulate preachers in the United States of America. And we are blessed to have him as a spiritual leader for this family and our legal team. That is Reverend Jamal Bryant. Thank you, right. thank, you. thank you, Attorney Crump. Thank you, Attorney Harper. To uh, this morning family, we are here today because obviously the earth is in weeping and we think that it's rain. Uh, this is a mental health month mm. and uh, the state should be crying in this moment uh, because what we are bearing witness to is the criminalization of mental health. Right. Tell uh, it, Cornell tell it. Uh, University did a study uh, that three out of nine prisoners are challenged with a mental health crisis. Right. Rikers Island gives us the statistics that four out of ten have severe or serious mental health challenges. Mm -hmm. Isn't it amazing that LaShawn died because of mental health uh, or the absence thereof? Break it down. Uh, what it is that uh, Attorney Crump shared with us is that he died from neglect. Uh, really shudders to the core and to the spine of every family in Georgia who has a son, who has a daughter, who has a husband, who has a brother, who has a mental health challenge. Isn't it all the more glaring uh, that we see the startling data in black and brown communities of uh, those who are finding themselves trying to find peace within their mind are dying from leeches and from bed bugs of those who have not just slammed the door but who have turned their back. Mm. Uh, this family to be mm. here is not pounding for a check, but a pounding for respectability and for somebody to take responsibility. Amen. The mental health community does not need handcuffs. They need help. Yeah. Uh, and so we are praying that this will not just be a call to reminder, but a call to action. Yeah. And so this family that stands today, our president of the NAACP, our attorneys who are here today, in small measure represent the larger mental health community of the state of Georgia. Yeah. Uh, this is not just a black issue. Yeah. This is a mental health issue. Yeah. And on the last week of mental health awareness in the state of Georgia, we ought to be mindful of those who are suffering with PTSD, mm -hmm. those who have ADD, uh, those who have schizophrenia, those who have bipolar, mm -hmm. and all the more, how many more are undocumented? Mm -hmm. What does this case say for parents who have young people who have been documented mm -hmm. and school systems provide no assistance? Wow. Communities provide no assistance. And I cannot, Attorney Crump, point yeah. at the criminal justice system without pointing four fingers back at the church. Mm -hmm. What is the church doing for mental health clients in our pews and in our congregations? Congregations outside of making them feel uncomfortable. The raising question that I've got to ask Governor Kemp is what does it say to your administration mm -hmm. if the prisons in the Ukraine are in better condition Ooh. than the prisons in Georgia? How, how is it that 40 days of neglect, mm. uh, that there is no assistance, there is no aid, there is no medication, and so this is in fact multi-layered wow. of how it is that this young man has died. Uh, this is not an inmate, this is a brother. Mm. Uh, this is not an inmate, this is a son. Mm. This is not an inmate, this is a citizen. Mm. I am not a lawyer, but I do know mm. that you are innocent until proven guilty. Right. Yeah. And if that is true, then Fulton County, you are guilty, guilty. of criminal neglect. You are gu guilty of turning your back on countless brothers and sisters who are now hanging in the pendulum, yearning to breathe free. If this is not addressed, then the Statue of Liberty ought to be covered mm. uh, because we ought to be breathing free in this nation, knowing that if I have mental health challenges, will this nation address it or will it ignore it? Mm. Frederick Douglass, one of the great abolitionists of this nation, mm -hmm. said I got more prayers answered when I got off my knees. Mm. I am not on my knees today. I am standing yeah. for LaShawn realizing uh, that this shall not go forward, that we cannot criminalize those who are mentally challenged. Yeah. We've got a system, we've got to aid them, and we've got to strengthen them. Yeah. And let me say as an asterisk that medication is not the remedy, yeah. mm. but love and support and a surrounding of a wow. community that realizes and recognizes if my brother is in trouble, 
then so am I. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, LaShawn is not crazy. Fulton County is crazy if they think that this is permissible and this is digestible. So whether it's rain, whether it's sleet, or whether it's snow, we are not mailmen, but we will deliver the message that all of us have got to be free. My Lord, my Lord, thank you so much, Reverend Brad, for bringing the word. Uh, before the family calls, we understand there are a lot of people you may have somebody in your family who can be arrested anytime here in Fulton County and taken to that jail. So activist Marcus Coleman is going to speak about how they've been trying to deal with these issues. Uh, give it up a great freedom fighter right here from Atlanta, Georgia, who goes all over America. Uh, we talked a lot about state leadership. But technically, at Save Ourselves, we plan to go to the United Nations and document wow. this as a human rights violation. Wow. Thank you. Wait a minute, I don't think you all heard, but when I say LaShawn Thompson, you should say a human rights violation. Yes, I know it's rainy, I know it's windy. I just want to run down how this could possibly happen and then I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. You guys have reported over and over again, Fulton County Jail is in the news repetitively. Mm -hmm. Just the other day, a so-called inmate chiseled through the wall to go to another unit to stab a so-called inmate. Wow. Wow. How do you have the time to chisel through the wall the same way that you neglected LaShawn Thompson? My Lord. We have uh, former COs of Fulton County Jail, which you reported, that have popped the cell doors of other inmates in order to be assaulted. We also have Drugs running rampant through the jail. We also have deplorable conditions in the jail. What does that point to? There is a lack of respect for the current leadership at this jail. There is a lack of respect for the board of commissioners. We called out the governor. We think that is appropriate. But please understand that LaShawn Thompson just didn't get neglected to death. LaShawn Thompson is a violation of the human rights statute by way of the United Nations. Thank you. Wow. My Lord. Wow. Thank you, Marcus. And, and now you will hear from the family of LaShawn, and then we'll take questions before this liquid sunshine greet us all too much to bear. This is his brother, Brad McCray. He has been very affected by this. He's emotional. So y'all pray for him. He's not a lawyer. He's speaking from the heart. So Brad, you tell them what's on your heart, brother. Good morning, good morning. Uh, hearing Mr. Marcus speak always hits my spirit. He gives me a uh, Malcolm X vibe. <laughs> my name is Brad McCray. LaShawn Thompson's my older brother. Uh, I want to thank Colin Kaepernick for helping us find the answers and find the facts. Oh yeah. Uh, something that we already knew in our heart, but he gave us a chance to prove it to the world. It's enough that the bed bugs and lice sat there and ate my brother to death, but the neglect hurts me the most. That in 2023, that we'll see people leave people, let them torture, let them rot in the cell. That hurts me the most. These images all over the internet, all over the media, it's disturbing, it's horrific, and it's a big impact on my family. I have another brother and seeing these images and going through this as a family sent him into a mental breakdown. It's hard for me and my family. I just want to thank everybody for coming out. I want to thank everybody that's standing with us. It lets us know, lets us know that we're not alone. We're asking to speak to the governor. We hope that we will talk to the governor. He will give us some type of insight on what's going on in his state to help us help other people. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. No, thank you, man. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. And uh, the final person we hear from, Attorney Harper, will be uh, the uncle of LaShawn Thompson, Cairo Thompson, who wants to talk to you from his heart. Thank you. Thank, thank you for coming. Um, I just want to say 93 days, mm. 93 days my nephew was in jail and didn't come out alive. Mm. Uh, 
his mother and his father is dead. Yes. So, as a parent, it's where I'm here standing. Yes, sir. And all I can say is, when I heard the news was, who's responsible? Mm. Who's, who's, responsible? whose duty was it to make sure my nephew came out alive? Right. Now, <clears throat> I can tell you now, I don't know a lot about anything. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. But mm -hmm. duty and responsibility in the military is what we do know. Mm -hmm. Somebody should be held accountable for what happened to my nephew. Amen. Now, they talk about that this thing is a, a big thing that's bigger than what we can ever imagine. And a lot of times, these big things don't hit you until it hit home. Right now, this is about closest home as it can hit for me. Yes, sir. Okay? So it should be something done in his behalf for what they did or how they allowed it to happen. Amen. Now, what I want to say is I don't know any of the people that was responsible, but I do know somebody had the duty to check in on him, feed him, and give him medication. So somebody should be held accountable. Amen. Now, what, what I really want to tell you is this. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm really talking about, preventing our extinction. Us as a people, as a black people, get neglected so much mm. that it's just an everyday thing. Now, we went from the slave house to the White House, uh -huh. and we still have not gotten to the point that they treat us like we should be treated. Amen. 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 When do it stop? When do it begin that we get treated just like everybody? We're not asking anybody to go around and kill nobody. We're not asking that. Mm -hmm. We're only asking that we get treated just as good as everybody else That's being right. treated. Amen. Amen. Equality. Amen. So we have to be here in the gap sometime when somebody else can't do it for themselves. So right now, I'm trying to stand in the gap for my nephew. He's Somebody needs to be held accountable. And it only takes the, the look at a book, because every person that was put in the office, they raised their right hand. Mm -hmm. They swore an oath to uphold their duties and responsibility. Okay. That's all I'm asking. Amen. And if the government go governor have to get involved, get involved. Because we're involved as close as we can get right now. Yeah, amen. And we're only asking everybody else. And if you look at this picture, <clears throat> you can see that you have every walk of life in this picture. Okay. In the United States, when you really want something to be done, you get everybody involved, every walk of life, to make a move. Okay. When you get everybody in, something is going to happen. Yeah, I'm only asking you to go to your friends, family. You can go to the en enemies if you want to. Tell them to get involved and try to make something happen. Thank you. Thank you. Justice for LaShawn Thompson. Justice for LaShawn Thompson. Justice for LaShawn Thompson. We'll try to take a few of your questions if you have any, but obviously we're going to go quick. Mr. Crump, we're with V103 News in Atlanta, Georgia. We're live on Instagram and Facebook, by the Yes, ma'am. You have a lot of these cases, sir. Case after case after case. When we talk about a LaShawn Thompson case, even, I mean, what does that invoke in your mind after you've seen so many of these cases? I want to go on record. This is the most deplorable death in custody case in history. I mean, think about, there's been some really horrific ones, but the neglect that LaShawn Thompson suffered from not getting medicine and dying a slow death of hundreds and thousands of bed bugs and lice sucking the blood out of his body, calling his heart what was it, Attorney Hopper? Cardiac arrhythmia. Cardiac arrhythmia to start beating sporadically to lead to his death. 
That is a horrible death, Reverend Bryant. I mean, to lay there and be unable to do anything because of your health issues and the fact that they did not give him his medicine. It is inhumane. They are being shared with the world today. You, This is the first time they are being released. They got to us Saturday, and we're releasing them to the world at this moment. So ever since the press conference a few weeks ago, has he, has he been in contact with the family at all? Yes, he has. Okay. Yeah. And the county commissioner has not. Okay. The county commission have not been in contact with the family. And, and let's make this point clear. The sheriff has taken responsibility for this. He knows that they did wrong. Mm -hmm. And he has stood with his family publicly and taken yeah. responsibility. We appreciate him for that. We wish he had done more to prevent this. Yes. But he has stood with this family mm -hmm. to take full responsibility. Now it's time for the Florida County Commissioners to take responsibility as well. Yes. Yeah. And, and I hope y'all heard that, that uh, Attorney Hopper wasn't at the mic. But he said the sheriff has stood with the family and has accepted accountability and yes. responsibility. That has not happened with the Fulton County Commissioners as of this date. And so, again, Mr. President Griggs, this is an election issue. Any other questions? Has the lawsuit officially been filed? No, it has not. There was uh, a period of time that passed, obviously, since uh, uh, the death of Mr. Thompson and the time this autopsy was conducted. Normally, an autopsy is conducted within hours or, or a day or two of, of the death. Talk about yeah. the value of this autopsy uh, given those circumstances. Yeah, and, and Attorney Hopper and I both would speak to that. And I don't know if Attorney Edwards and uh, Attorney Austin want to chime in. Understand, that was an autopsy taken that gave no answers to the family. Just Yo, yo, loved one is dead, and that's all we have to offer. Imagine if that was your loved one. You fought with bed bugs all over his body in those deplorable conditions that Attorney Harper showed you, and they try to tell you that we have no answers for you, almost as if to sweep it under the rug. And you know what? When it's undetermined, there can be no criminal negligence. So we are thankful to the Know Your Rights Initiative for getting this independent autopsy, as Brad said, because now we know what the cause of death. And so the district attorney can take a look at all the autopsies and make a decision if there is criminal negligence. For the family and our legal team, there's no question this is criminal negligence. If that was your loved one, and it could be any of you. That's what we keep talking about. That jail is deplorable. How many of your family members, friends, and loved ones are going to be arrested and have to go to that torture chamber? Colin Kaepernick got involved. Hello. Hello. Let, let me address this question okay, quickly here. The Fulton County Medical Examiner, as you were alluding to, came up very quickly with his decision. It was undetermined. I'll call it the dependent autopsy results because they're dependent on Fulton County. Mm -hmm. Remember, it's the Fulton County Medical Examiner. Quick result. It took more time for Dr. Roger A. Mitchell to come up with his conclusion. It took him many, many weeks. He took his time to come up with all of the full details that you see regarding the psychosis and the malnutrition and the uh, dehydration. This was not mentioned by Fulton County. It was dependent. We now have the independent results. Okay. A few more questions and then we're going to get Colin the family Kaepernick out of the rain. Colin, Colin, Colin Kaepernick got involved. How important is it for you to have these high profile entrances into your case? Well, certainly, uh, not only Colin Kaepernick, but people all over America have been calling saying, what can we do, Attorney Crump, to help this family? Because the reality is this. As Uncle uh, K. Rose said, when you're black in America, you know that, it, but by the grace of God, it's not your family member who is the next LaShawn Thompson. 
So we all have to raise our voices, whatever platforms we have. I was so grateful to Reverend Jamal Bryant using his gifts and his talents to come out here and stand with this family and speak Hello. truth to power. That's what it's going to have to take, speaking truth to power. But it's not enough just to speak truth to power. We have to have the courage to act against that power. And so we're sending the message to the Fulton County commissioners, if you don't act, more of us will continue to show up every month. We're not going to let you sweep this under the rug. The undetermined autopsy will not be the final word and that you are going to be held accountable. The only question is how long before you take responsibility. I know that's right. Any last questions? We thank you. We'll keep you updated. Oh, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Uh, Chris, what will you do, attorney, in your law firm? NAACP and all of the organizations do to protect the lives of innocent civilians as we were, you know, a spied on, we relied on, I've been raped. Well, let, let's, let's talk about that. Now, we want to focus on LaShawn Thompson right now. Uh, we have uh, Gerald Griggs, who's a great president of the NAACP, who, who well, he's here now, so we're going to do it. Let's focus on LaShawn for right now because his family came out in this liquid sunshine to make sure those autopsy results were articulated to the world yes. that LaShawn Thompson did not deserve to die like this. Right. Brittany Griner got better treatment in a Russian prison than LaShawn Thompson got in Fulton County Jail. Oh, Absolutely. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Thank you, man. Man. Here with, with you all. Way. Way. <laughs> you hear what uh, Brad said when Marcus talked in his